Now, one thing you did this week uh, that I didn't quite hear is you were doing the bottom bass note with the top. Mm -hmm. So let's see if we can do that. So we have this. Answer. And then you did this, I believe. Doctor, we know we're not going to play a short staccato, but it's a little mm -hmm. springboard into the slur. Watch. I see. Watch, watch this. I see. Okay. Watch me. Very tricky, but. See how I sing it? Uh -huh. Answer. And remember at the end, lean, wrist, uh -huh. wrist forward, wrist forward on the B flat. The phrase is taper. Reminds me of in the Chopin, remember in that trio section where we mm -hmm. go. Da, 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 remember, you just. Mm -hmm. like, oh, right, right, right. That's mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. what's happening there because this just melts over to that with one motion down, right? Not a separate finger. Very clean. Toddy. You'll, mm -hmm. be, you'll be pedaling this on one pedal. And then you'll have. Oh. Right, separate pedal here. Because we're doing okay. steps, but you know what? Anything like that happening. Okay. So you're pedaling B flat and D because it's a chord, right? It forms a chord. Exactly right. Okay. Now okay. you got it. Now we're going to go back to. steps. You have to pedal through steps separately, right? Otherwise it's all blurred. But now you want more arm weight here. Breathe. See if I can do the separately lift you have to lift there on the echo watch what happens lift you're lifting so, between the D and the B flat D you're lifting between the eighth note and the two sixteenth notes right you can't you're not connecting that okay so look what's going to happen when you actually play it watch the slur and then he has no slur across right this is lifted this is slides down breathe chiari. lift up okay. so the first time before there. It's fine. Okay. It's just the idea of phrasing it is what we're looking at. And the second phrase is where you're leaning when you see these sighing down pairs of eighths. Remember how we do sighing pairs with scales? Remember we used to do things like this. Remember how we do that? Remember our sighing? Yeah. You've got sighing pairs coming down so you want to lean on the first of the eighth note of the pair so you don't get an accent on the second note. 
So if you sang, you'd go, Tom, lean less, lean less, lean less. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. subtle but it has to be done that way. Uh -huh. You must not do an extra wrist or finger motion on the second note of the pair. Otherwise you're going to get up and down sound. So watch. Ta -da. First you're sliding. Slide less, lean less, lean less, lean forward wrist, lean forward wrist less without a finger action. Just let the wrist go forward. So here's the second one. Ma, fold and lift. It's very okay. tricky to do that. Space it nicely. The first one's the springboard on that echo. That's where you go up and then you ta You're just rolling around, roll around. That's all you do. Mm. Roll around, lean less. But overall, mm. it's an echo, right? Roll around and down. And that's what we're going to do today. Is now chord. We're going to chord the alto voice. We're going to make chords out of the sixteenth notes in the middle. Now mm -hmm. you notice you're going to divide two notes in the left and two notes in the right. This alto voice is divided between your hands. Uh, okay. 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 So what we're going to do now is chord them like this. The B flat and the E flat is going to be chorded with the G and the B flat. And you have this okay, two, I think. one, one, two. Naturally this has to be a one, two. You might want to write that in. That the right hand has a thumb two, whereas the left hand is a two, one, one, two. You have an E flat chord there. E flat, E flat, G, E. So, so that is the second inversion of E flat major, right? Because here's this yes. position, first, yes. second. Yep. So you basically have a second inversion divided between your hands. Okay. And what I want you to do here is notice that you're going to play that chord twice because we're chording it first. You want to use your beautiful supple wrists so you don't get a, a smack down. You want a beautiful sound. You want this. notes because they encompass four sixteenths so one and two and show me that the second measure you have um, what happens to the bottom note the B flat moves up to C flat e. the E flat the moves down to D e. the G mm -hmm. moves up to A flat and the B flat moves down excuse me moves up a half step to so you have a diminished chord look at this diminished chord Just notice the diminished chord there's one note missing in that diminished chord. It would be the F. If it was a full diminished, it would be this. Right? That would be a full diminished. But he skips the F. That's okay. It's still diminished. Right? The diminished chord. So C flat, D, A flat, C flat. Right, because, if you, the, uh, right, okay. because if, you move, if you move that A flat down here, you'll see a full diminished three note diminished chord. See that? If I move that A flat down on the bottom, then I just place uh -huh. it. You can see it's a diminished chord. He's just sort of separating out the diminished chord. He's giving you a space. Right. Nice. The important uh, okay. thing is how this, what's really important in Greek is how he moves the voices from this chord. You need to follow those voices. See what I'm doing? I'm tracking those voices. Okay. Okay. That's that's chromatic harmony. You told me you're taking a course. In oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So there's your chromatic. I would call that chromaticism, chromatic harmony. Uh-huh. Because it's moving by half steps, right? Got it. There it okay. Is. And that's important for you to hear that line moving up by the half step. Oh. Huh. So let's do first these chords. One, watch, and two. So the next one. See? Okay. Uh. Once you know that the G upstairs moves to the A flat and you want to be diminished chord, you have to have a minor third up here. These are all minor thirds, right? Minor third, minor third. 
Uh -huh. So all you have to know is the bottom note, because you're going to build a minor third over it, and the top note, you're going to build a minor third over it, so you create the diminished chord. Right? So then your brain doesn't have too much weight to all this stuff going on. So look what I do. I know that those bottom notes are moving up by half step, and I build a minor third above those bottom notes. See? See what I mean? See what I mean? See, that's moving on the same fingers. Two, one, one, two, go up by half step. Two, one, one, two. It's going up by half step. And then you move up by half step to this. I'm going back and forth just to see what's happening. twice, it's going to unravel broken chords twice, right? Yes? Now I'm going to go ahead because we're going to keep that same one again. We're going to keep what you just did in another measure, and then we're going to pull it back down to what you started with. So it's really very patterned. Two beats, it's two quarter time, so it has to be one and two. Because okay. you're doing eighth sixteenths, so you have to really space them. Eighth sixteenth, da 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 da, and and this is the answer. Eighth sixteenth, da da. Thumb, remember the thumb goes here, and then we do da da. Mhm. And I want to see something with finger. Okay, over here, you're switching yeah. to three, and guess what? You're going to have to play another right hand note, B flat. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we did that quite. You have to play that B flat, and then you do the little roll to there. Oh, okay. And you'll okay. see what happens. So we need to like improve the third line with the right hand first. Now this okay. has got to be spaced. Now you're going to do question and answer here first time a little deeper. There, left, there. Answer that. This is very soft. One and soft B flat. Very soft here. Then. It's very tricky because it's one and two and a one. See how I did that? Okay. One dash three, soft B flat, that's an alto voice. Melody is. So that's very tricky. Where's forward? Should I do that? Lots of wrist motion. All wrist motion. Answer. Da, da, da. Guess what? Softer, but that's your destination. The D. Mm -hmm. Wrist forward. And then this is E flat. Soft B flat. And then. If you're going to pedal, I will be really careful about any steps get off the pedal. Right? Mm. Careful. Then you can put the pedal back. You can have this. Uh. Or very easy on the pedal. I'm not on the pedal, come to think of it. Here's where I'm on the pedal. You gotta be real careful because of all these steps. See, I do a sophisticated pedal. It'll be hard for me to explain exactly what I do. But let's put it this way. If it starts blurring, get off the pedal. If you start getting things like that. Mm -hmm. Because I, um, I do quick pedal changes where the student will get crazy if they know how I do it. Because a really good pedal pedaling is not symmetrical always, okay? Oh, that means oh. off the pedal. Yeah, and they're quite right because you don't want that blur. Uh, you want to get off quickly, it. yes. But you know what? You still have to hold that C on the bottom because it's worth four sixteenth notes. you got to be careful about that. So you do this. Yeah, so that gives you more harmony. It, it doesn't dry it up as much. That's right, it tells you to lift, but it, it's probably right. Watch. But it gets a little dry, so I, I pedal a little up and down. But that's right, that's true. Let's do that. 
That way you won't be blurring. As far as pedaling there, there's going to be pedal. This will be one pedal, watch. This will be a new pedal, new. And that will stay. Right? Otherwise it'll dry it up. This is romantic music. So pedal, new pedal, soft B flat. Stay with the pedal until you get to, guess what? Here, new pedal. Okay, then you definitely cannot have that dry up, or it's not Greek at all. See, they don't okay. tell you everything. So pedal, this is going to be new pedal soft. Stay with that pedal, and then start your new pedal here, like this. exquisite piece. <laughs> so beautiful. You, you want to have a horizontal line, a little bit of traction. See, I use my wrist. Look at the wrist motion. It's all wrist. I'm playing the whole thing with a wrist motion into my fingers. Hardly any finger action. Steady to it. Watch. One, and two and one one and two and one real sure about that what this is treble this is alto this is a little ripple into treble right right you don't want anything heavy you're just rolling to there sure that the B flat has nothing to do with the melody. It's all harmony and alto. See, look what happens here. It's not part of the melody. That's an alto voice, right? The E flat is the melody. And I want to be sure that I'm really hearing you play and, and your brain or your mind is focused on watch. One and two. I don't want that B-flat interrupting. I want it to be harmonic underneath. And I don't want it interrupting the line. I want to hear the treble, and that's just creating harmony underneath. I feel like it's flowing across, though. Everything's floating and floating. I'm going to go across. Across. That's the tricky thing about this. So here's what's happening. Right on the bottom, you're going to go to a three. That's right, just like I'm doing now. The five went to a three. Exactly right. And then there's one pedal here. Then I start my new pedal. And guess what? The B flat's tied over. See this B flat? It's tied over. That B flat's tied over. You see, tricky in terms of the choreography of this. Ultimately, this just blends in. I already switched three and then one pedal to keep the B flat down new pedal right now you're back home we haven't put all these things together quite yet have we now what I also like you to start doing is that middle voice let's see if you could do the middle voice with the bottom voice let's see if that works I'm going to check that but you're going to, no, let's break the, the voice first. I want you to do this. Right? Rolling wrist motion. Now, I don't think we did this yet. We didn't do this yet, did we? We didn't continue, did we? We didn't continue the other voice yet, did we? But guess what I want you to do with that? Block it. The second line, you're going to block. The good news is you're doing two, one, one, two. So that's always nice. So look what happens. So it's happening. And you have to switch. You have to do this. See what I'm doing? Look what I'm doing. And look what the good news is. The top voice is just staying E flat G. The bottom voice is moving. You notice how this is moving? Right. And this just right. stays with E flat, so you just focus on what's happening on the bottom. Look at that. That's why we do lots of layering. No, 
Now, some people do something slightly different if they have small hands. I'm going to show you what small hands like to do when we put this together, so it might affect that middle voice a little. I don't use, I do a stretchy kind of thing. I do this, watch. Watch here. See, I just rotate over. And I prefer you do that. So I, the reason I like that is because it keeps the pattern of the fingering and the unraveling of the middle voice. You don't have to change fingers. So that's what I, you should just do some rotation. The rotation's easy. So what you have to do now is this, second line. Keep the same fingering, two, one, one, two. Don't use the alternate finger, use two, one, one, two. Two, one on the bottom, one, two on the top, right? Can you show me that? Okay. We practice a little deeper the first time. arm weight difference. You lift the arm weight off. Now let's go back and add everything together from the first line where you're going to do practicing. Now what we're going to do is your next assignment is to actually play through that alto line with this rolling rippling 16. Remember they're rippling. They don't want to sound like Bach. They want to roll into the romantic era. So you're going to do this. you want a continuous line from left to right. You don't want to hear separations. You want r ripples and waves of fours, right? Because the slur goes right across to four notes. Mm -hmm. you can see. Are you repedaling at the beginning yeah. of the measure there? Let me see. Again. Now, I'm not, you know, the pedal's going to be a little different. I would probably have one pedal for that first measure, but there's not going to mm -hmm. be one pedal for the second measure, because it'll get, it'll get too, too, um, blurred. It, yeah, I wouldn't worry so much about a pedal. Put some pedal down there while you're doing this, yes. That's one pedal. Put one, put one pedal here too. We might be altering that a little bit later. That's fine. Go by the harmony right now. Right. Here I pedal each one. permuting anything other than what you've been doing up to now, which has been the outer frame. Because we have to study this before we start goofing around with things like this. What am I doing? I'm doing the top two voices. Once you got sort of blocked that inner voice, the alto, which yeah. is what? It's, it's a continuous voice across. Huh? And okay. you it's seamless and you don't have any accents, but you get little waves of sound and harmonic waves of harmony. It's waves mm -hmm. of harmony. Um, this piece is very tricky because it has this thing doing this, and then you don't want that interrupted by the waves in the middle, right, jumping out, right? The balance is going to be quite tricky. 